The summer season was over, and the day the baby goats have been eagerly waiting for has finally arrived. Hooray! Today is the first day of school. I'm so excited to see my friends. Me too. The mother goat sent her cubs to school. While seven baby goats were walking on the school road, one of them suddenly stopped because he forgot something very important. I forgot my painting book. You go, my siblings. I will catch up with you. While the baby goat was on his way home alone, Big Bad Wolf Jack, who was always hungry, was looking for prey in the forest. Uh, this is too big. This is too small. I can't be full with it. This is too fast. I can't catch it. At this moment, the wolf was very happy when he saw the baby goat. Wow, a baby goat. My favorite. <laughs> to trick the baby goat and to get him off the road, the big bad wolf made two antennae from the branch of a tree and two wings from its large leaves. <laughs> I look like those cute butterflies who are friends with goats. Now let me trick that little goat and swallow him with a great appetite. The baby goat was about to enter the garden of the house, but he suddenly saw the big bad wolf in front of him. Huh? Y you You are the bad wolf Jack! Help! No, no! I am not a wolf. I'm a butterfly. Look, do wolves even have antennae like this? But, but you have a long tail. But I have big wings too. Yeah, you are a butterfly. Yeah, yeah. I'm the biggest butterfly in the forest. Where I live is a wonderful place. Come, I'll take you. But, well, I have school today. It's even better! We'll go right away and come back. Don't you want to have a nice adventure and tell your friends on the first day of school? Big Bad Wolf Jack and the baby goat were making their way deeper into the forest, while the other baby goats were painting in art class. But when one of the brothers turned his head, he saw that one of his brothers was not in his place. He hastily told his teacher, and they all started looking for the baby goat. Meanwhile, the baby goat who was following the wolf was asking him curious questions. Butterflies fly. Why are you walking? Can't butterflies like you fly? Bah! Yeah, but if I fly, there will be a storm. Now close your eyes and count slowly to three. Okay. One. Bad Wolf Jack tied himself to a tree branch by the waist with a thin rope. Two. And he started to shake himself from side to side. Three. When the baby goat opened his eyes, he saw the bad wolf flapping his wings right to left. Bah! You really can fly! But the branch, which could not carry the weight of the wolf, broke. And when the wolf fell to the ground, one of his wings flew away. Oh, your wing is broken! Let me go call for help! Bah! Wait! Haven't you ever seen one-winged butterflies? One-winged butterflies? Bah! They live hidden in places in the forest. Come on, follow me! <laughs> Bad Wolf Jack and Baby Goat came to a place in the forest full of bouncy leaves. The wolf climbed onto one of the bouncy leaves. He jumped, jumped, and flew into the air. The goat that was watching the wolf was fascinated by that. The bad wolf then came to the goat. He wanted to eat him right there. 
But at that moment, a crow flew and landed on the antenna on the wolf's head. Ah, a crow! Help! I don't like crows at all! Go! Hey! Go! The wolf shook his head quickly, and the crow took the antenna from his head and flew away. Ah! The crow took your antenna! So what's gonna happen now? There are also butterflies with one wing and one antenna, baby goat! What? Really? Yes! Let me take you to the cave where they live so you can see for yourself! Yeah, why not? Bah, I'm curious about them! Besides, whoever enters the cave learns to fly! What? I want to fly too! Very cool! Searching for the baby goat all over the forest, the siblings found a torn leaf and a broken branch on the ground. Ah, they plucked the leaf and cut the branch! Who would do this to the forest? Ah, ah. When the teacher saw the giant footprints on the ground, she immediately realized that the wolf did this and thought that the baby goat was in danger and made a plan to save it. Just then, as soon as the baby goat entered the den, Bad Wolf Jack took off his wing and antennae and threw them aside. The poor baby goat was so scared when he saw the wolf in front of him. Help! You are the big bad wolf! After a while, the teacher and the baby goats came to the wolf's den and hid in the two corners of the entrance. The teacher stretched the sticky thread she was using in the painting class to both ends of the cave. Then she asked the baby goats to dance in front of the den. <laughs> Hearing the voices of the goats, the wolf was immediately alert. Aha! There are more goats out there! I'll go and get them here, too! The wolf wanted to jump on the goats, but got tangled in the sticky threads at the entrance of the den. And he revolved and disappeared into the woods. Help! Help! Thanks for saving me. I fell into the wolf's trap because I wanted to be a flying goat. You should always be yourself, little goat. Not compare yourself to anyone else. The baby goats returned to school together and continued their lessons with the excitement of the first day. Since that day, the baby goat has not been deceived by any trap because the information he learned at school made him more careful throughout his life. On a nice summer day, Goldilocks had an idea. Since she never liked to read books, she built a tall tower by stacking the books in the house on top of each other. She jumped over the tower and started having fun. Seeing this, her mother immediately warned Goldilocks. Books are for reading, Goldilocks. Playing with them, you can damage them. Ugh, but books are so boring. It's better to play games with them. At that time, Goldilocks noticed another book almost falling out of the window. Hmm, where did this book come from? Just as Goldilocks was about to touch the book, the book suddenly took wings and flew towards the forest. Goldilocks was so curious that she followed the book. Hey, wait! Flying book! Stop! Uh, oh, where did you go? In the depths of the forest where Goldilocks was running, there was a white hut. A cute goat family was living in this hut. And the hut was full of books. Sometimes even neighboring animals were going and borrowing books from the goat family. 
the father goat was in sleeping before finishing his carpentry books, the mother goat's cookbook was always with her, and the baby goat was loving colorful fairy tale books. That's great! Now I can make a rocking chair for myself! Hmm, so clover soup should only take eight minutes to cook. But that day, the baby goat was very upset because she could not find her favorite book. Oh, <laughs> I can't find my book anywhere! I want my winged book! <laughs> Maybe your book went for a little stroll in the forest, my little goat. The goat family started to look for the lost winged book on the forest path. At that time, Goldilocks was very worried because she lost her way in the forest. Oh, how am I going to get home now? Oh, I can't find the book either. Oh. Then the winged book appeared right behind her like a butterfly. Just when Goldilocks was about to catch it, the book flew towards the goat family's hut. Goldilocks came running to the door of the hut and knocked on the door. The door opened slowly. Hello? Is anyone there? Goldilocks saw hundreds of yellow, pink, thin, and thick books. She started searching around to find where the winged book was hiding. Hmm, this is a big, thick carpentry book. It must be so boring. Goldilocks found other books in every corner of the house. But none of them interested her as much as the winged book. Huh, and that's a cookbook. Ugh, the vegetable dishes are not for me. <laughs> Unable to find the book she was looking for, Goldilocks finally got very tired. When she curled up in a corner to fall asleep, the winged book was placed under her head like a pillow. The goat family, who could not find the baby goat's book anywhere in the forest, eventually returned to their hut. But when they entered the hut, they saw that all the books were scattered. Huh? Someone threw my carpentry book into the fireplace! Someone threw my cookbook into the pot! Someone found my winged book! Not only did she find it, she made it into a pillow and slept on it! Oh! <laughs> when the baby goat cried, the mother and the father goat came to her immediately. They were very surprised to see Goldilocks sleeping in a corner. Who is this person? Why did she scatter our books? Look at those wrinkled pages! Oh. <laughs> Goldilocks woke up when she heard the baby goat crying. Oh, uh, you! Uh, I, I'm, I'm Goldilocks. Well... Calm down, little girl. We won't hurt you. I was just looking for this flying winged book. Sorry for breaking into your home. That book in your hand is my book. I won't give it to anyone. Aw, but for the first time, I really wanted to read a book. The baby goat was very stubborn, but she was very surprised when she met someone like her who saw this mysterious book take wings. Huh, no child has ever seen this book fly before. So it seems like the mystery book chose you. So keep it. It is my present for you. <laughs> Goldilocks was on top of the world with happiness. She immediately began to read the first sentences of the winged book. At that moment, all the books in the house took off and took their place in the library. Uh, are the other books in the house magic too? <laughs> books don't have magic, Goldilocks. But our imagination, which has grown thanks to books, has a wonderful magic. 
It's getting dark, Goldilocks. Let's take you home. Your mom must have been worried about you. But we haven't read the other books yet. No one can read that many books in one day. Now you can come to us to read books whenever you want. The goat family took Goldilocks to the garden of her family's house and said goodbye to her. Goldilocks quickly passed her mother, lay down on the floor, and immediately started reading her mysterious book. Goldilocks, where have you been all these hours? I was chasing a flying book, Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Do the books ever fly? Yes. They don't really fly, but anything can happen in our dreams. From that day on, the baby goat and Goldilocks became book friends. Sometimes they lent each other books. Sometimes they met to read a book together and had a dream. Thus, these two friends realized that the mystery of the books can be discovered by dreaming. And one day, our dreams in the books will come true. Once upon a time, in a little cottage in the woods, lived a mother goat and her little goats leading a happy life. The little goats were very cute. They all were like toys. Mother goat, like all mothers, loved her little goats very much. She protected them from all the wild animals in the forest. One day, before she left the house to find food in the forest, she called her little goats next to her and... My dear children, I am going into the forest. Do not open the door for anyone. If the wolf comes into the house, he will eat all of us alive. He's very shifty. He will disguise himself into different shapes and try to fool you. So how will we recognize him? The wolf has a rough voice, and I have a soft and sweet voice. So you can recognize him from his low and rough voice right away. Right when she was leaving, the mother goat remembered something else. She turned to her little goats. Ah, one more thing. The wolf's feet are black, and mine are white. You can also recognize him from his feet. Don't worry, mother. We can protect ourselves. You can count on us. Mother goat kissed her little goats one by one and headed into the woods. The wolf was watching them from afar. When he saw Mother Goat leaving, he waited a while, and then he came in front of the cottage and knocked on the door. Who is it? Little goats, open the door. Your mother is here. I brought nice food for you all. But the little goats recognized the wolf's rough voice right away. Without opening the door, they yelled out. You're not our mother. Her voice is sweet and more beautiful. You're the wolf. You can't fool us. The wolf got very angry because he could not fool the little goats. So he went to the shop bought a big piece of chalk and ate it. Now his voice sounded much softer, so he went back to the cottage and knocked on the door again. This time the wolf started to talk with his soft voice. My little goats, open the door, it's your mother. I brought food from the forest for all of you. Hearing the wolf's soft voice, the little goats thought that it was really their mother this time. Just when they were about to open the door, one of them shouted, Wait, wait! Let's look at the feet from underneath the door. Of course, when the little goats looked from underneath the door, they saw the wolf's black feet. So they yelled again without opening the door. We will not open the door for you! Our mother's feet are not black! They are white! You're the wolf! As furious as he was, the wolf left. This time, he went to the bakery. When the baker saw the wolf in front of him, he was very surprised. I'm a vegetarian now, so I will eat pastry from now on. Could you give me some flour? The wolf came out of the bakery with a little sack of flour. When he got near the cottage, he opened the sack and poured all the flour on his feet. 
Now his feet were all white. The shifty wolf knocked on the door for the third time. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I have brought food for all of you from the forest. First show us your feet so we know it's you, mother. The wolf showed them his feet with flour. When the little goats saw the white feet, they believed that it was their mother and opened the door. And what did they see? The wolf was standing right there in front of them. The little goats did not know what to do. They started to run around yelling. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I will catch all of you. <laughs> one of the little goats went under the desk. The second one into the bed. The third one into the chimney. Fourth kid hid in the kitchen. The fifth one got into the closet. The sixth hid behind the curtain. And the seventh kid went into the giant clock on the wall. But the shifty wolf was quick, and one by one he caught them all from wherever they were hiding. Run! Run! Come here! Don't run! I will catch you all! I said stop! The only one he could not find was the one hiding in the clock. He was already full, so he gave up on looking for them and head out. There was a big yard a little further from the cottage. The wolf lay under a tree on the yard and started to sleep, snoring. Short while after, the mother goat returned home. When she saw the door open, she knew something bad had happened and started to scream. When she entered the house, she was shocked. The tables and chairs were all upside down. Curtains were torn. The beds were all messed up. The pillows and sheets were all on the floor. Mother Goat looked for her little goats but could not find them anywhere. She started to yell out their names one by one, but not one answered. Finally, it was time to call the last one's name. Only then she heard a high-pitched voice. Mother Goat ran to the grandpa clock and took her kid out of there. Mother Goat and kid hugged. The little goat started to tell the story, crying. The wolf came in disguise and we thought it was you and opened the door. The wolf ate all my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Goat was very upset. She cried for her little goats. With only one of her kids remaining, she walked out and started to go towards the yard. After a while, they saw the wolf sleeping under a tree. He snored so bad that the branches of the tree were shaking. Mother Goat observed the wolf for a while. She realized that inside his tummy, some things were moving. Oh my God! Can it be that my goats are in his tummy and they're still alive? She had a plan. She turned to her kid. Run home, bring me a needle, thread and the scissors. When the little kid was running home, Mother Goat collected six big rocks from the floor. After a while, the little goat came back with a needle, thread and the big scissors. Mother Goat cut open the wolf with the scissors. She saw one of her little goats right away. And then the other ones started to appear one by one. They were all healthy. Mother Goat couldn't stay still from the joy she had. All the little goats hugged their mothers with joy. Mama, Mama, we love you. They were all full of joy. Ah, my little goats, you're safe. Mother Goat put the rocks she collected carefully inside the wolf. Then she stitched his tummy with the needle and thread. The wolf was sleeping so deep he'd not feel anything. He did not move. 
Mother goat and her little goats quickly got away. When the wolf woke up, he stood up. His tummy hurt really bad. He thought to himself that it was because he ate too many goats. Because his tummy was full of rocks, he got really thirsty. He came next to the river to drink some water. But when he was walking, the rocks were hitting each other. My tummy feels so heavy and full. It's as if all the goats I ate turned into rocks. He wanted to kneel down and drink some water. Due to the rocks being so heavy, he lost his balance and slipped into the water. Oh, help! Help me! I'm drowning! Help! Yelled out for help, but no one helped him. He could not bear the weight of the rocks anymore and went under into deep waters. When they saw what happened, Mother Goat and her little goats ran to the river. The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! Yippee! Hand in hand, they all started to dance and jump around. From that day on, Mother Goat and her seven little goats had a peaceful and happy life in their cottage in the forest.